All right, Scooter here. And uh, we did a review earlier on the Micro VGs that we put on the Stinson 108. This week, we do a review on the uh, AV20. We put in the UAvionics AV20 multifunction display. I did it mainly uh, for a stall indicator on this aircraft. Uh, the Stinson 108-2 did not come with a stall indicator, and I wanted some sort of stall indication. And uh, the AV20S does have an angle of attack indicator. I thought the AV20 would do a good job at replacing the uh, stall indicator. Aviation, the way it was meant to be. Just real quick, here's what the AV20's features include. Uh, we have an angle of attack display, a G meter display, attitude, roll and pitch, so it's an artificial horizon or a, a backup attitude indicator, electric. Um, we have a slip skid indicator. You got a clock, which does both Zulu and local time. Outside air temperature. It shows the bus voltage. Uh, you have dual timers, count up and count down available, and engine run time. We've got a flight timer. A density altitude display. The density altitude display has been one of the displays that I most use. Knowing the density altitude has been fantastic for, uh, for short field and stole work. Uh, it has a true airspeed display and uh, it does have audio alerts. So upon startup, it does take a 30 seconds or so for it to initialize. There we go, it's telling me the angle of attack right now is 10 degrees. I am about 10 degrees sitting here on the ground, so that would be correct. Now in the angle of attack menu, I also have a G load. Like any G meter tells you your high and your low for the flight, right now we're 0.9 to one. We have uh, just a digital readout of the G load. And this is the max G load and the angle of attack. This is really useful they say for setting the angle of attack you set your highest angle of attack uh, and then it figures out the green and the, the cautionary range and then the uh, the stall range so you need to go up and do a stall and figure out at what angle of attack your aircraft stalls next we've got the artificial attitude indicator i love this thing it it's really nice uh, right now the way i got it set up i have an aoa over here well, you can change the view on it, get rid of the angle of attack and a slip skid, or put it on. I keep the angle of attack indicator on, on all the time. As I say, I bought this for the angle of attack and then found I use it for a lot more than just the AOA. And then we have our setup page. And when you turn it on, you get this view, which is the density altitude view along with bus voltage outside air temperature and an angle of attack. So here's the density altitude. Now that's a multi-function display. We have density altitude. We have true airspeed, which comes off the uh, pedostatic system that is in, uh, plumbed into the, uh, into the AV20. We've got the Greenwich mean time. We've got local time. And I believe you can set this either to Zulu or 12 hour clock or pardon me, 24 or 12 hour clock. And then back to the density altitude. I pondered, should I get the temperature probe and put a temperature probe on this airplane? And uh, in hindsight, I am so glad I got it. If it, it was really a huge difference in the functionality of the AV-20S over uh, not having it. Here we can see the five bars. We push over here for the next set. And we have engine runtime. Now I found that the engine runtime is based on uh, voltage. So when the amp meter or when the alternator starts to uh, make voltage, the engine runtime starts. I have a generator. I don't get engine runtime. Engine runtime only starts when I uh, first start up and have a little extra voltage or when I'm doing the run up. Otherwise it, uh, it works when I take off so it's much like a flight time. Here's the flight timer. The flight timer must work with the pedostatic system, but as soon as you start going down that runway uh, and get in the air, the flight timer does start. So if you have an alternator driven airplane, you've got an engine runtime, you've got a flight timer, and then you've got these 
two other timers. This is timer one, it's a count up timer. Hold to uh, reset it. And then uh, I can set a timer, a countdown timer. All right, let's just count down from a minute there, accept it. Notice accept, press both buttons, so I accept it, and then I can count down. You also have a second timer, and you can start and stop these timers. So uh, I time fuel with it. I run left tank, I start timer one, right tank, I start timer two, and then I've got the engine run time for total time. So I, I know how many minutes I burned off the left tank. I know how many minutes I burnt off the right tank. I didn't think I'd use it much as a clock and I use it more as a clock than I, than I anticipated. Let's go up and uh, check the AV20 and its functions in the sky here. We got some back, uh, the camera's behind me here. We'll do our best to show it, we'll zoom in and out. We'll show you how it works. All right, so here we are. We're up at altitude. I'm going to go to the angle of attack indicator here. We're going to, up here it says clear peaks. We're going to clear the peaks. Just off the speed ramp, I think I see it. So now we don't have a. Uh, we don't have our peaks, and we have a clear G load. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and put the aircraft into a, into a power off stall here, partial power stall anyway. We can see the angles flashing, give me a warning. As I come back here, let's see how there goes the red angle of attack. It's setting in a stall, and I've got a, uh, there we go. I gotta reduce it. There it comes down. It, notice, it works very well, showing the stall recovery. Look like I had a peak angle of attack of 15.8 degrees. The backup attitude indicator, which is really a lifesaver in this airplane. Uh, you know, it, uh, if you lose electricity, it has 30 minutes worth of backup. Uh, so you would have an attitude indicator with a full electrical loss. And I'd have at, at least an attitude indicator with a slip skid indicator. As you can see, the ball works. Left. Bring it over to the right here. Get it into a slip. There we go. You can see that works. Recovers quite quickly. A little bit of lag, but not much. Let's go ahead and take a look at the G meter here. Let's see if we can get any move any G's around. All right. Oh, angle of attack problem. So that angle of attack indicator pops up to angle of attack because I got to a high angle of attack and takes it out of the G meter. Let's see if we can get some negative G's going. Not negative, but some light G's anyway. to 0.1G, a whole bunch of functions at a very affordable price point. New avionics has really hit it out of the park um, and changed the whole landscape of these glass panel retrofits. The idea that I can put a round hole gauge into a round hole instead of trying to put a, a square peg in a round hole excites me as a pilot because I can keep this classic look. Anyway. That's my review of the U Avionics AV20S. Uh, put it in for a uh, stall indicator and got so many more functions. Go ahead, leave a comment down below. If you have an AV20S, let us know what you think about it. If you have any questions about the AV20S, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, if not, I'm sure someone else who watches the video can uh, give you the answer. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you next time.